Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the parish family of St. Peter Claver. As we gather together to celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, it is with deep gratitude that we turn our hearts and minds to God and give all of our energy in prayer and in worship as the body of Christ. In the first reading today, a prophet compares the word of God to rain, bringing new life. In the second reading, Paul finds our struggles in faith meaningful because they lead to new life. And in the gospel, Jesus indicates that parable, parables reveal the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. He exemplifies that by telling the parable of the sower and its interpretation. Today's Mass is celebrated for Margaret and Edward Cross and George Sawyer. Please stand now for our entrance. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome everyone to the house of God as we come together as a family and those who are with us at their homes worshiping with us. We come together to give honor, glory, and praise to our God. But for those of us who are here in the church, I want to go over some procedures one more time. We did it last week, we're doing it this week too, because there's some new people here today. Please keep your mouth and nose covered throughout the entire Mass. Completely covered, nose, mouth, have to be completely covered throughout the entire Mass. There is only one bathroom located in the back of the church to the left of the cry room. Our hall is locked. <clears throat> There will only be two people singing. Ray, who you just heard, and I'll be intoning some things. Wasn't it very difficult not to sing our opening hymn? It's very, very difficult, but it's to help other people. It's to make sure everybody stays safe. So you could hum along. That works. You could hum along. Or do what I do is I'm, I'm singing God's praises from my heart inside. And that, that seems to work for the time being. Um, also, there will be no offertory procession and no offertory collection. There, are, there is a basket as you leave church today, right over here, this is the way you're going to leave today. There's a uh, basket over there if you brought your envelopes with you. Regarding the sign of peace, please do not give each other the sign of peace. You might consider just putting your hands over your heart at that moment and asking God to bring peace to everyone. Regarding Holy Communion, Communion will be distributed right after the final blessing. After you receive, you will immediately exit the church, as I said, right up this side aisle here. And I'll go over that with you at Communion time. So, as we begin this celebration of God's unconditional love for each one of us, let us ask the Lord to touch our hearts right now and embrace us in that beautiful peace. 
that only he can give. Lord Jesus, bread of life, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, sower of the seed, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, fruitful word of God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And now with joy in our hearts, let us give all the glory to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return me to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Guard. 
garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. As he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. Some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty, or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Counting today's parable about the sower and the seed, we will have three weeks of parables, and they're all about building up the kingdom of God on earth. You know, it seems to me that we're all living in two worlds at the same time. The physical world, that's obvious to all of us, and the spiritual world, that to some is not so obvious. In fact, some people don't even know it exists. This spiritual world is essential to be living in the kingdom of God on earth. In these parables, Jesus brings together the physical world and the spiritual world. In reality, 
it was never God's plan for them to be separated anyway. So today, Jesus talks about different kinds of soil, earth, to make a spiritual point. In this parable today, Jesus indicates that if the sower throws seed on the ground, some of it will grow. If the climate is agreeable and there's enough sun and moisture, Jesus is the sower of the word, but only if the seed of his word lands on good soil will it grow. He already knows there are different types of soil, spiritual soil. He knows this because of the different ways the people were responding to his ministry. Some people accused him of being possessed a breaker of the law, a blasphemer. The seed that fell, fell on the hard path, the birds came and ate it up. Some people went to him for healing and he made them well and they were happy, but didn't think any more about him. The seed fell on rocky ground and withered for lack of roots. Some thought he was interesting. He told some nice stories. But as soon as he challenged them to deepen their faith, to make their faith grow, they just moved on. The seed that fell among thorns, the thorns grew and choked it off. But then there were those who were hungering and thirsting for more. They hung on every one of his words. They desired to grow. The seed that fell on rich soil and produced much fruit. These are the people living in the kingdom of God on earth. The physical and spiritual worlds is really one world and they are living in it. They continue to grow and produce much fruit. We know that some of the growth we experience in our life, such as growing physically, just happens automatically, like we grow older. That's just automatic. We don't have to do anything about it. It just happens. Other kinds of growth require intentional effort on our part such as the need to read and study and learn to get a college degree, for example, or grow in some certain skill that you want. Growing in God's grace and God's virtue is like that second type of growth. It's not accidental. It is intentional on our part. It requires an openness on our part, a desire to seek, to go deeper, to grow. That's living in the kingdom of God on earth. And the proof that we are living in the kingdom of God on earth is that we are producing much fruit. What is this proof? What is the fruit? What is it? You are producing the fruit of the kingdom if you are growing in compassion for the less fortunate. If you are growing in understanding of those in some way seem different than yourself. If you are growing in empathy for those who suffer in any way. If you are growing in forgiveness of those who hurt you or offended you. If you are trying to be a uniter and a reconciler, if you are growing in generosity and becoming less selfish and less self-centered, and ultimately, if you are growing in love. The fruit of living in the kingdom of God on earth. My sisters and brothers, I think Jesus is saying to each and every one of us today, 
Live in my kingdom. Live in my kingdom on earth. Grow. 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 And build my kingdom on earth. And now, as a Christian family, let us all profess what we all believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We, ha- we who have received God's mercy humbly ask the needs of the church and the world. That every believer be fertile, fertile soil for the growth of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our community and country that we may ask for the grace to see every human being as a child of God, regardless of race, language, or culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the swift recovery of those suffering with the effects of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from physical and spiritual hunger be filled with healing goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way today for Margaret and Edward Cross and George Sawyer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have recently died, may they rest in peace and rejoice in the peace, joy, and love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Hope, our prayer chain, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, bringer of the harvest, you give us every good thing. Grant what we ask this day, for as always we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. a time to plant and a 
time for harvest, a time to meet, and a time to part. A sower went out to sow the seed, some of it fell upon the Some among choking thorns To everything There is a season A time to be born And a time to die A time to plant and a time for harvest, a time to meet, and a time to part, a time to meet, and a time to Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offering dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself, and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim together. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and his assistant Bishop, Juan Miguel, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Take 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God offered for us, you take away the sins of the world. Oh, grant us peace. Oh, grant us lasting peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And now I invite those who are worshiping with us at home, I invite you to a spiritual Holy Communion. So, and to do that, I'm just going to ask you to repeat after me, meaning these words, either you could say it out loud or to yourself, and you might want to just place your hand over your heart. Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my being. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you with all my love. And unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. I'm just going to go over with you one more time this week of how we were going to receive communion now. <clears throat> to receive Holy Communion, you will come forth a row at a time down the center aisle, the right side pew, then the left side, then the right side, then the left side. You will come forward in single file, six feet apart. The tape on the floor is six feet apart. An usher will be in the center aisle if necessary to guide you. 
When you finally get to the front and you're the next person, you would then, to receive communion, then you will come right up to the blue line on the floor right in front of this table. Keep your mouth and nose covered and in place. Stretch out your arms as far as you possibly can with your palms up and low enough for me to see the top of your hands. I will gently drop the host into your hand. With the host in your hand, move over to one of the two boxes you're going to see here on the floor. When you get there, lower your mask and place the host in your mouth. When you then replace your mask and you immediately exit the church out that side aisle. The exit is behind the organ. There'll be an usher here to guide you to these boxes in case you need help with that. If you are not receiving Holy Communion, please come forward in the same line. You can either come to the table and I will give you a blessing, or you could just simply, when you get to the sanctuary, exit the church. Obviously, there will not be communion on the tongue. I will bring Holy Communion to anybody who is, is sitting in the chairs in the back of the church when the church is empty. Finally, just so you know, if I accidentally touch someone's hand as I'm doing this, I will stop, I will re-sanitize my hands, and then proceed. And while I'm getting ready for this, we're going to have our announcements. Yes, we have announcements again. <laughs> These are today's announcements. At this time, our bulletin will be online only. Please visit our website to view the bulletin. Due to the coronavirus, missionaries are not able to be with us in person this year. However, in the face of the pandemic, they very much need our prayers and financial support. The Congregation of the Holy Spirit will be receiving our parish's assistance. The Congregation of the Holy Spirit is a community of priests and brothers who have brought the gospel to the poor and marginalized throughout the world for three centuries. They are seeking our support for these specific projects. Evangelization efforts in areas of Tanzania, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Mexico. Efforts to repatriate refugees who fled the African nation after civil unrest mother-child medical services, including HIV AIDS care in Tanzania, education and seminary formation in Taiwan, Vietnam, and the Philippines. There will be a collection basket next weekend for the Mission Appeal. Please make checks payable to St. Peter Claver. You may also give through WeShare. There is a link on our website. More information is in the online bulletin. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving it growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the Cheers. 
So we live. 